Welcome to part three of my French Unique Radio Restoration. In part two, I dismantled the case, stripped it back and had to re-veneer the side panels. I did a bit of panel beating and I managed to flatten the cardboard backboard of the radio. And after a lot of work, the refinishing and painting was done. This week, I'm going to reassemble the case, do a bit of work on the chassis and put it all back together. We'll see how it looks. I hope you enjoy part three of my Unic Radio Restoration. In last week's episode, I forgot to edit in a bit of film I did on addressing the magic eye and how it was mounted. So I'm just going to put that in first and then move on to the real part three. This is the decorative ring off the front of the radio that housed the uh, magic eye. So that's the old EM34 and that fits in there with a little bit of slop. But I'm going to use a 6E5 and that doesn't fit. I could just mount it at the back there, uh, but it's too far back in the radio. It's a bit hard to see so without bending down to look at it. So uh, I'm going to try and fix that. So I've got my vernier here. I'll just measure this inside diameter here. And we've got about 27 mil. Let's check another. Yeah, 27, 27 is close enough. Now valve is 28 and a half. So this is one and a half millimeters uh, smaller diameter here. Uh, it is tapered so it, it will fit back here. So I really only need to move that back edge uh, to, to make this fit. So what I'm thinking of doing is mounting this in my lathe and just trying to get maybe something in there and just try and expand it a bit. I don't know if that's going to work. If that doesn't work, I'll just machine it off until the, the new magic eye will fit inside. Now this is what I've done. I've got a piece of MDF that I've just cut into a shape so the jaws would grip it. And uh, I've machined that out so that the little ring would sit inside it. And then I've just put a plate over the top to hold it. And it's quite solid, so I don't expect it to move. Now I've got a bit of dowel here that I've mounted in my um, lathe. And I'm going to grease it and then I'm going to try and push this out. I'm going to be very careful, just see if it's going to work. If it's not working, I'm going to uh, abort and I'll just cut the ring off. Now I've just lubricated that with some uh, petroleum jelly. See what happens. It might be in my imagination, but that's starting to bell out. According to the caliper, that's having absolutely no effect at all. I've resorted to using a, a metal bar to um, try and get this to expand a bit, but it's not working. So I think at this point, I'm going to machine it off a bit, at least sort of flush with there. Uh, that gives me a little bit more room. Uh, I think it's actually started to crack there, so uh, this is not working at all. Well, I've cleaned it, I've machined that off and cleaned it up a bit and we hopefully get 28 I think we need, don't we? Or 29. Yeah, so 28. So there should be, should be 0.3 of a millimetre clearance. Right, let's have a look. Yes. Excellent, excellent. Well, I'm pretty happy with that. That looks pretty good, actually. Uh, I've got to put the tabs back on, then I'll polish it a bit and dip it in some uh, lacquer to keep the shine on. Now, I've got to work out how to mount this magic eye. That was the only bit left there that was part of the clamp that used to hold it in. I've got a tool clip here, which will hold the base okay. Uh, so the magic eye goes in there like that. Let's come around here. And I just need to extend that to there, and I assume looking at this that whatever was here just pressed on here so you could just pull the, the eye away so I'm going to try and make something up here and I'm going to mount that on there and that will engage into that so I'm going to bend this into a u-shape on both sides and hopefully that'll just slide on so I've got my little bending pliers here We'll see how that goes. Yeah, that's good. Oh, 
All right, let's see how we went with that. No, that's not bad. Yeah, that's that's good. It just gets a bit tight towards the end there, so it'll hold it there. I think that'll do. I put a board at the bottom here so that the magic eye sits on it. So that's about where it needs to go when it's finally installed. Uh, I've put the uh, tool clip about halfway up the base. So it's just a matter of me marking that there. And I'll cut that off a bit higher than that. Now I've put a little bend in my bracket and this clip will sit on there and it'll sit in the bend there and that'll stop it rotating. And I've got a rivet I'm going to put in to secure it all. I've mounted a snap in the vise. Let's put our rivet in there. there we go. Yeah, that's pretty good. Now, I've used a rivet because I just thought if I put a pop rivet or something in there it's just going to look out of place so you, you can't see those as much as a, a pop rivet or a screw or nut. All right let's see here we go. All right so we should be able to just pull that off there. There you go and should be able to put it back on. Worries. Oh, there it is from the front. Uh, the time the bezel goes on there, that, that's about where it should be. That's come up pretty well. Today I'm going to look at the chassis and uh, clean it up and uh, probably give it a coat of paint. It's um, looking pretty tacky. It's got uh, lots of rust in uh, certain spots. In fact, it's got rust all over it. The capacitor and the two IF cans, I'll just clean them up a bit. I'm not going to polish them or anything silly. Now with the transformer, it's uh, got a fair bit of rust on it. I'm hoping I can just sort of pull it apart, pull the top cover off perhaps. Uh, the voltage selector plate here just unscrews so I should be able to just pull that away and uh, perhaps just dismantle some of it, at least the top plate of the transformer and uh, give it a rust protection and paint that again. Before I take it out to the workshop I want to pull these wires through for the lights and the speaker and even the magic eye at the back there. I'll pull them underneath and that'll clear up the chassis for me. I'll remove the valves and that should give me enough access to do some sort of paint job on this one. Well that's it all cleaned up now and uh, I'll head off to the workshop. I should be able to uh, do something now with this. There's plenty of room left. All right, let's have a look and see what we need to do. Um, I've already had a look at the tuning capacitor. That's um, the screws I can't get to. They're, they're stuck under the wave switch. So I can't possibly get to those. That was obviously the first thing they mounted when they built the chassis up. These valve or tube bases, I can't get them out either. Uh, it's just too hard. I'll see if I can get that spring off. There you go. I've got a bit of very fine steel wool here. It's um, four zeros or four aught, I think some of the Americans call it. All right. I'll uh, work on a couple of those to see how I go with it. And I'll come back and show you. That's come up pretty good. I used a uh, brass brush here to just get in around the screws. Uh, this one's a bit crooked now. I'll go and get a new one, I think. But uh, yeah, that got in there and cleaned it all up. So that's coming up well. I accidentally cleaned up some of the chassis, so I'm doing two jobs for one there. So I'll do all of these now, and uh, then I'll turn my attention to the transformer. I'm trying to do these two, and I've done some of that. Uh, I couldn't just get into the corners. I can't get around the back, uh, so they're not coming out as well as I like. I've put a bit of rust removal cream on it, just see what it does to uh, if it'll try and uh, move some of the corrosion that's around the base there. That's come up really well. Uh, it's brand new almost. I'll go and do it to the rest of the bases. It's not practical to get the top off this transformer so, so I can treat it. So I'm going to put some rust remover uh, on it. I'll just make sure I don't get it on the coils. That was my main concern. These areas of rust on the chassis, I'll sand back and uh, put some rust converter on those as well. 
uh, I'll do the whole thing at once. In one of the comments on, uh, on a radio, somebody suggested using this uh, starter fluid for cars because it contains ether. And uh, I'm just I'm just been cleaning this uh, capacitor with it. It actually works pretty good. Takes it takes me back to my model aircraft days with the fuels. That's yeah, that's uh, very good. I've decided to remove this filter capacitor uh, to gain better access for the painting. So this uh, this washer looks pretty awful, so I couldn't clean it properly. So I'll get it out of there and uh, rust treat that. I removed a little voltage selector panel from here. I couldn't get in well enough with that in there, so uh, it's out of the way now. Well, I think the next step is to put some rust converter on here and uh, we'll let it soak in and we'll be very close to painting it, I think. I've got some rust remover in a cream form so I can just brush it on. So I'll just apply this to any rusty areas and uh, and let it sit. It doesn't say how long to leave it for, but half an hour seems to be a good amount of time. And I'll also do these um, valve sockets as well. I'll just leave that for about half an hour and then I'll come back and I'll have to try and wash it off. It's uh, supposed to be washed off with water. This has been a bit more than half an hour so I'm just going to clean all the rust protectant off with some water in a cloth. This has got a, quite a thick layer of the rust remover so I'm going to brush it up like, and get it all liquid again. I think I'll go and run it under the hot tap and uh, I think it'll be alright I don't have to soak all the electronics underneath. Now I washed all the chassis off with some uh, hot water and it's alright I don't think I've damaged anything I hope. Uh, now I've masked up the transformer here I'm going to do that first. Now I've got some primer here that will protect it from the rust reoccurring so I'm just going to spray it with that and I'll give it a top coat when this dries. Got to let that dry for a couple of hours and uh, then we can top coat it. Alright, time to give it its top coat. That's come up pretty good, I'll let it dry and we'll come back and uh, do the next bit. Okay, that's all dried. Um, the next step is to mask off all these components and uh, then I'll, I can paint it. So I won't bore you to death with me doing that. I'll uh, just I'll mask it all off and I'll come back when I'm ready to spray it. It's all masked up, ready to go. So I'm going to give it a coat of undercoat and uh, this will um, stick to the uh, little bit of rust that's left there. It's been treated, of course, uh, so it won't be an issue. I'll just let that dry, it's pretty late tonight so I'm going to leave it overnight and in the morning I'll put a primer on it and then we can rub it back a bit and put the top coat on later in the day. Well it's the next morning and this has been drying overnight. I'm now going to put a high build primer on it and that will just help disguise some of the areas where paint has been removed where the rust is. You can see the little paint line where I, where I feathered it back in but you can still see it. So this will just help cover that up and then I can sand it back and it should disguise it pretty well. This uh, paint takes about an hour to harden and then I can um, just sand it back and hopefully smooth it off a bit. Alright that's dried, I've sanded it back uh, and smoothed it out as much as I can and now I'm going to put the top coat on.
All right, that's, uh, that's come up okay. I'll let it dry for a couple of hours, then I should be able to take the tape off. So that should be pretty dry by now. I'll start pulling the masking tape off. That's about as far as I can go out here. Uh, I still need to put this capacitor on, but I'm just waiting for the little washer that sits under here to dry. It's been uh, painted. Once that's done, I'll put that on and I'll take it inside. It's uh, too late today. I'm going to go and have some dinner and we'll do this in the morning. It's the next morning and this little washer is dried now, so I'm going to put the capacitor in. Okay, I'm back inside and I'm uh, on my little workbench here. I've got to fit this voltage selector back on here and connect all the wires. Now, I originally had this uh, waxy woven stuff, but it's gone hard, so I'm not going to use that again. It kind of cracks when I try and bend it. So I'm going to use heat shrink uh, instead. Now, I've cleaned all the wires up, trimmed them all to the same height. They were all over the place. Now, the wire in that one wasn't even connected. It was just um, sitting there. I don't know if it was making contact just by accident or what. Anyway, I'm going to solder these in. Now I need to keep these wires away from that bus bar across there, so I'll just make sure they bend out of the way. Alright, well that's all finished, that came out alright, good. If you saw part one, you would remember that I re-soldered this connection here to fix the oscillator that wasn't working. And I found it by pushing down on these capacitors here, it would make the oscillator work if I pushed on it. So I re-soldered it and then it came good. It never really sat properly, I really didn't think redoing that solder joint was going to be the, the fix. I was just looking at it then, that the, the way it's set up as how redoing that solder joint fixed it. And I look down here. Now if you look carefully, these two wires go through here and they're soldered and I think they're touching the chassis. I think that's what was going on. I was pushing on that, moving that away and that would start the oscillator working again. And when I resoldered it, perhaps it just stayed there for whatever reason. I think it was a coincidence. I don't think that solder joint was anything to do with it. So I need to pull this coil back a bit and clip that excess lead off. So I'll do that. There's two screws on the bottom here. I can get to it and just pull it away a bit. Maybe I can get the cutters in there. But I've managed to get the coil back as far as I can. I can just get my cutters in there, I think. Otherwise I can grind it off with the drip. No, that's great. These cutters are terrific. There you go. They're still soldered in. They're not, I haven't, I haven't broken the connection. All right, that's come out. All right, I'll refit that now. And I think that will have fixed that issue because that may have come back at any time. I've remounted that coil and we're good now, there's plenty of clearance. I've put all the valves back and I'm ready to give it another test after I've dismantled it slightly. Uh, I'll go to dim bulb and I'll just put some power on. It's about right, 16 watts and 200 odd volts, so that seems to be about right. Let's turn it up a bit. I got it on shop speaker. Getting something there. A few years ago, uh, there was a series of fights in the state of California where roughly ten million dollars of, as you were saying earlier, no. <laughs> yeah, the shop speaker's got a lot of bass in it, so it sounds a bit strange. <laughs> Yeah. 
All right, so it seems to be going. I'll just put it on full power. And we should go up to about 28 watts, 29, something like that. 26. I haven't got the magic eye in it, so that might be why. It's one of, it is easily one of the wildest, weirdest things I've worked on. I'm still stuck on. All right, that's working as well as it was. So you... I've just plugged the magic eye in and that's brought us up to our 29, nearly 30 watts. So that's about where it was before. So I'm quite happy with that. The next step is to get the front fascia here, mount that, put the dial on, put the pointer on, uh, restring it, and then I can adjust the tuning on the set. Well, here's the front fascia, it's all painted and I'm ready to put it back together now. Now one of these pieces went on each side. I'm just using the old nail holes to locate it. I was going to say I'll put another nail in, but that's pretty secure, so I'm not going to bother. I'll just do the same on the other end. Alright, there it is all done. I've put some nails down the bottom here, and just a few on the top to hold it, and uh, that's pretty good now. Nice and solid. So I'll just continue with the other components that go on there now. The front panel's finished, so I'm ready to mount that onto the chassis. Now here's the three screws and spacers they were using to mount the front panel. They're just too weak and thin. Uh, they're bent because they've become loose because the timbers crushed where they've done them up. So I've come up with another idea and that is these. I've made new spaces, much thicker, bigger area to bite onto the wood, uh, thicker screws and I'll fit those on. You can't see them anyway so it won't affect its originality. Well there it is, uh, that's a much better solution to what they had and it's nice and solid, it's good. I'm going to restring this, uh, it's pretty easily lay out and I've sort of mapped it out when it, before I pulled it apart. Oh, well, this is a pretty easy one to do. I just want to mark where the spring needs to go and I'll put about that much tension, so about there. So I'll just put a little mark there. Alright, let's put the spring back on. I'm just going to run it through a few times to settle the string in and then I'll probably have to re-tension it I think. It's uh, slipping a little bit so I'll re-tension that, there's not much tension on that. I re-tensioned the spring and that's now very accurate to tune so uh, very good. I think the next thing to do is put the glass on. I'm ready to put the glass on now. I've put two little rubber pads along here to uh, sit the glass on. And I've also put a little felt runner there to rub along the glass. So that goes in there. Now it's got to fit the little retainer here. This is the original one. This is one I made up to replace the missing one. 
that's um, quite secure. All right, that's done. I want to uh, check the alignment now. I've connected my signal generator directly to the grid of the mixer valve via a 0.1 microfarad capacitor. And I've got an AC meter on the plate of the output valve. So that's going to measure our output as we adjust it. I tried to determine what the IF frequency would be for this radio, but I couldn't come up with anything solid. It was 455, 460, they just seemed to vary. So I'll see what we're set at now and then um, try and work off that. I don't think it matters so much if the IF is somewhere near where it should be. It just means that the oscillator is going to be up a little bit or down a little bit. So we'll see what it seems to be set at now. I've got my signal generator set at 455. Uh, I'll put this on PO, which is broadcast band, and see what we're at. And it's coming up on the meter. There we go. That's full volume. So I'll just adjust the frequency. And um, we got 461, okay. So you'd probably think that 460 may have been the uh, the original frequency, so I'll just set it at that. I'll start here and work my way to the front end of the radio. I'll just turn the volume up. I'll just adjust it, I'll see what we get. Okay. I'll just do them all again, just to make absolutely certain. Alright, that's right. So, I've set it at 460, I don't know if that's good or not. I'll switch the signal generator from the grid straight into the antenna via a little 200 puff cap there. I'm going to check where we are at 600 uh, kilohertz, which is about 500 meters. So I've got the dial set to 500 there, you can just see it, it's a bit hard to see in there. And I've got the frequency generator on 600, so I'll just turn the volume up. Let's see how close it is. Well, that's actually spot on. I think the alignment on this is going to be fine. I've set the signal generator to 1500 kilohertz. I have the radio tuned to 200 meters, which is about 1500 kilocycles. I'll just see how far away it is. Yeah, it's not far away at all. So I go back to 15. I think the back one there is the oscillator. So I should be able to get my little spanner on there. See if that'll turn, there we go. Okay. All right, I'm back on the uh, 500 mark here, which is 600 kilohertz. I've got the signal generator on 600 again, and I'll just turn the volume up, and I hope it's there. There's something there, how far out are we? Oh, it's about right, actually. All right. All right, we'll call that quits. Um, I think that'll be okay. So we've got the extreme end of the scale sorted out there. All right, I've got the frequency meter on 1400 this time. I've set the scale here to the 214. It works out to is 1400. Uh, and I've just used the frequency meter to align that to there. I've just got the speaker on dummy load so I don't have to listen to it, but I'll just... There it is there, so I'm, it's lined up 14 and 14. And we'll put the speaker back on. So I'll just peek this antenna trimmer. I think I'm wasting the time. It not, I really haven't adjusted anything, but it's checked out all right. I've been trying to set this oscillator up uh, for the long wave and the short wave bands, and I've had a lot of trouble trying to understand what it's doing. I ended up pulling one of the slugs out, and 
I found out there was three slugs inside that former. Two of them maybe for long wave or short wave, uh, and one's for the medium broadcast bands. So I guess you put one slug in, tune the center slug, and then put the other slug in the, on the end. I don't know. Anyway, I'm going to see how I go. So I'm going to put the first slug back in. I'll just put a tiny bit of candle wax on there to stiffen it up a bit in the thread. The uh, little rubber strips they put in there have long gone. All right, that one's in. I'm going to turn the radio on. This is the middle slug going in. At some point it should tune in the radio. I've got the radio on uh, 600 kilocycles and the and the generator on 600. There it is. Okay. All right, so there it is. So that's the center one set. That's the medium wave. And here's the end slug. So that's either long wave or one of the short waves or both short waves, I'm not sure. Anyway, the medium wave's back where it was. Might be a bit hard to see there. I've got the pointer on 49 meters on the short wave two band. Now it should come up 6.1 on this scale here, which is D. Wow, that's pretty close. Uh, so I should be able to adjust that with this slug here. There it is. Alright, so that's shortwave 2 done. I've selected long wave on the radio and I've got the pointer on 800 meters. 800 meters equals about 374.7. So I've got the signal generator set. Now it should be this slug at the front that I need to adjust, so I just wind it in, it's wound out a fair way. Here it comes. Alright, that'll do. We've already done this medium wave and short wave here, so I'm not going to bother filming it. I'll just make sure they're correct and uh, I'll wrap it up then. It's a new morning and I'm going to put the case together this morning. I'm pretty excited to see how it comes up, uh, good or bad. I've laid out all the screws. I think I know where most of them are going to go. I'll start putting it back together. One of the problems with the aesthetics of this radio was that the back panel dished in from here. There's nothing on the bottom. I've cut up a bit of timber here and I'm just going to mount it on here. Uh, it clears the radio okay. I don't think it's going to stop me pushing it in. I've left it fairly thin. So I'll just attach that and hopefully that'll solve that problem.
Sacre bleu. It doesn't look any better than when I started. Well here it is, it's a French built Unic radio from the early 50s, AM only, it's got uh, two short waves and a long wave. So I'll turn it on, we'll see what it sounds like. Bonus, 1300 Or you can send me a text 04679 22612. Steve, will today's uh, stop work affect patients? No, the, the union's very... Um from right around the world, 15,000 of them who were treated with either hydroxychloroquine or chloroquine. Bombshell Bell, 7 back pedal, 9 ship of dreams, 14 highway to success, along with 16, 17 and 18. Well, it works all right, and it, it actually sounds quite good. It's got a good sound, this radio. There's a fair bit of noise it's picking up from something in here. I'm not sure what it is at the moment. I mean, there was a lot of work went into this one, and uh, <laughs> I'm not sure whether it was worth the effort or not. So I managed to refinish the timbers all right. They come up nice, and the uh, borer holes are all covered up now. Well, that's it for this radio. I think I'll move on to something else now. Um, I might take a little break for a week or so. Well, if you enjoyed watching me struggle with this, I hope you'll join me for my next radio adventure. All right, let's tune in the station and see what it sounds like. Gosh, I haven't heard that for a long time. Don't want to hear it again. What? What is going on? Ah, here's the problem. We'll try it again. In the bad back lands of Australia. That's better. Yup. Right, back to normal. Alright.